G'day everyone, Viv here. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to our series on learning how to play Saga. In this episode, we're talking about our Warlord's special rule, or special rules. There are two types of Warlords. The General Warlord that costs zero points to recruit into my force, and Heroes of the Viking Age. Heroes of the Viking Age generally cost one point, some of them can cost two, but we'll talk about Heroes of the Viking Age later on. Right now, let's get into our special rules for our Warlord. So here on the table I've got my Warlord with some of his uh, chaps around him facing off a couple against some enemy uh, forces. So our Warlord has six special rules or five special rules and a caveat. The caveat is his armor rating in, in shooting. Normally Hearthguard and your Warlord have an armor rating of five. So enemy models need a five or six to hit him. However, in shooting, his armor is increased to six. He is really not keen to get hit by uh, uh, missile weapons, and he's probably a little bit more conscious of what's going on around him. So people shooting at your Warlord require a six. His armor is increased to six, so they, they therefore need a six to hit the Warlord. That's the caveat. Then we have five special rules. We have uh, resilience, and we'll talk about each of these in turn. Resilience, determination, we obey, Side by Side, and Warlord's Pride. But first, let's talk about the two most commonly used ones, Determination and We Obey. So here we can see, as we quickly saw before, my Warlord with a couple of units surrounding him. So Determination allows my Warlord to activate for free once per turn. He can activate and he can move, uh, standard movement, he could move, say, six inches, or he might activate to shoot, or you might want to rest him, he gets a free activation. That's our determination special rule. Let's move him back and we'll talk about We Obey. So once per turn I can activate him for free, and I can also, with that free activation, use We Obey the special rule. We Obey basically means that the Warlord, when he activates, can also choose to activate one of his units within short of him. So in this case, I can either activate this unit of Hearthguard or this unit of Warriors using the We Obey special rule. So the example here would work like this. I'm activating my Warlord using Determination for free. I'm going to obey the Warriors. The Warriors can now use that activation to do a movement only. You cannot use We Obey to shoot with a unit, and you cannot use We Obey to rest a unit. They must move, and whether they engage in melee or not is beside the point. They can engage in melee if they wish to, so we're activating uh, our Warlord using Determination. We're obeying the uh, Warriors using We Obey. The Warriors I'm going to move first into combat. I will then resolve this combat first. Once this combat has been resolved, then my Warlord will move up behind that unit. I could move the Warlord first, so let's just take everything back here. I could move the Warlord first and then move these guys. So the Warlord's going to move uh, six inches in this direction, and then he's going to uh, obey these guys. All these guys were obeyed before he actually moved. And they're going to move into melee. Now, the distances between the unit that has uh, obeyed the command uh, is irrelevant. They can move outside of short. The Warlord could move. He might move back here and uh, ask these guys to run forward. That unit that gets obeyed, that is considered an activation. So if they've already been activated this turn and the Warlord uses We Obey to activate them again, they will earn fatigue or generate fatigue as per the normal rules for fatigue. So that's our summary on Determination and We Obey. I use those pretty much every turn. Determination certainly to activate the Warlord for free. And as we saw in the example, We Obey, really, really useful for activating a unit and moving it into combat. Uh, why not? If the Warlord's there and he can ask them to move forward or move back to defend him, why not do it? So that's Determination and We Obey. Let's talk about Resilience. I use this every now and then, but this is a really, really useful rule for protecting the Warlord. So our Warlord here on the table is the type of Warlord that likes to lead from the front. Every Warlord should re lead from the front. Real men lead from the front. Not, not always the case. Sometimes you want to protect the Warlord. But in this example, our Warlord leads from the front. It's our opponent's turn. And our opponent activates this unit of Warriors and 
charges the warlord. They want to kill him. So they move into combat with the warlord. Now resilience here allows the warlord to ignore the first non-cancelled hit of melee. So let's quickly run through a small example here. We've got five attack dice for our warriors and five attack dice for our warlord. Uh, no special rules, no fatigue or anything. Uh, these guys uh, will roll up. They need fives or sixes because his armor value is five. They've scored two hits. He's going to fight back. Uh, he's scored two hits also. Uh, now at this point, the warlord has taken two hits. Let's get rid of some casualties here. They need fives or sixes to save themselves. Um, I've saved one of them, so one guy dies. The warlord kills one of them. So now the warlord gets to roll up his defense. Now, like everybody else, his defense is a roll of five or six in melee. So let's roll these up. So he's rolled a six and a one. So normally he'd take a casualty, he'd take a, a wound. However, the warlord's resilience special rule allows him to ignore the first uncancelled hit. So I'll ignore this one and I'll cancel the other one and my warlord is perfectly fine. Resilience also has a second part that allows him to sacrifice, I guess you could say, um, any non-levy units that are very close to him in very short range. So in this example here, let's say that this unit had inflicted three wounds on our warlord and we'd rolled up, let's just play this up a little bit, we'd rolled up a one, one and a six. So the first dice he gets to ignore, the six saves one of those wounds, but he's still gonna take one wound. Now he can use the second part of resilience to sacrifice one non-levy model within very short of him to cancel that wound. So basically it kind of represents, I guess, that uh, warrior or hearth guard model jumping in the way saying, hey, um, watch out, a lookout, sir, if you will. So that's the resilient special rule. A, he gets to ignore the first non-cancelled hit as we saw in the example. And B, if he has uh, hits that he has not been able to cancel, uh, he can sacrifice models within very short of him to do so. Now those models must be non-levy models. He doesn't want to be rescued by some farmer uh, who's been dragged onto the battlefield. I've set up on the table here another example. Uh, small unit of warriors, small unit of hearthguard, my warlord, a defeated unit of warriors, they've only got two guys left, and the enemy's warlord. So this is where we're going to talk about warlord's pride. Now, Warlord's Pride is the special rule that sort of forces, I guess, in some essences, your Warlord to attack the other person's Warlord. After all, uh, he, he wants to kill that guy. He wants to kill that Warlord and either take his land or pillage his village or whatever. So, come back to our example. Here our Warlord activates, perhaps using Determination, our free activation. Now, he might want to attack this unit of warriors and completely wipe them out. However, because I'm activating to move him, he is within movement distance of the enemy Warlord. Therefore, Warlord Pride says that if I activate the Warlord for movement, he must engage the enemy Warlord if he is able to do so. So that's the Warlord's Pride special rule. He has to attack the enemy Warlord if he activates for movement and is within movement of that enemy warlord. It's very simple. I'm gonna kill that other guy. That's what I'm here to do. If I can do it, I'll bloody well head, go ahead and try. So now that we've been through four of the special rules, it's time to talk about the last one, and that's side by side. Side by side is a little bit more complicated. And it is the only way in which I can engage a single unit with two different units uh, in, the, in, the, in the game. You would have noticed during melee that if I attack with one unit, attack another unit, I fight and then I disengage. I then activate another unit and then we fight and disengage. It's not possible to, act, to fight a melee with two units uh, versus one, except for side by side using your Warlord. So let's have a look at our example here on the table. I've got my Warlord with a unit of four Warriors and a unit of four Hearthguard, facing off here against the enemy Warlord, his Hearthguard and a unit of five Warriors. Now my Warlord activates, either using dice or using the Determination Special Rule, which allows him to activate once for free. So he activates, he declares we obey, 
which means that he can activate this unit of warriors or this unit of hearth guard. In this case, we're going to activate this unit of warriors and side by side. So side by side, very short, before we get into our example, basically means, come with me, we're going together to fight this enemy unit. So come with me is the We Obey special rule, and the fighting the unit simultaneously is side by side. So let's have a look here. Side by side and We Obey, normally if I use We Obey, I can move my warriors first and then my warlord. However, because I've also declared side by side, the warlord must move first. So he moves into combat. And now, because he's declared we obey and side by side, the warriors also move into combat. Normally I'd finish one unit first, but he's declared side by side. So now my warriors are also engaged in the combat. So now that we've got our units engaged in combat, and I use the term units because the warlord and the warriors are two separate units. So now I generate attack dice. I've got four warriors and my warlord generates five attack dice fighting against five warriors, so they generate five attack dice. At this point, the defenders need to choose whether they're going to split their attack dice to fight both the warriors and the warlord, or ignore the war warlord completely and fight the, war the warriors. So the warriors on this side can allocate no more than half of their attack dice towards attacking the warlord if they choose to. So in this case, they will attack the Warlord with three, which is half their dice rounding up. And as I understand it, when you're halving dices, you always uh, uh, round up. So I half and round up, which gives me three dice to attack the Warlord and two dice to attack the Warriors. Now, if we used any special abilities here from our battle board, those special abilities that I used would influence either the warrior, the, the warriors, or the warlord. It doesn't influence both of them because saga abilities are used on a specific unit. And again, I've got two units here, the warlord and the warrior. So in this case, uh, if I used any special abilities on the warlord, only his dice would be affected by that. So let's say our combat has taken place. Our warriors have attacked and uh, everyone, everyone's attacked. And our warlord has suffered two wounds and our warriors have suffered two, uh, three wounds. So we can use resilience here, another one of the warlord special rules that we spoke about before, if he takes casualties in combat. Now the resilience special rule is used after other casualties have been applied. So in this case, I'd normally do my warriors first. Let's roll these guys. I need fives or sixes to save them. Great, I've got a five and a six and one guy has died. And then I would go ahead and roll my Warlord. He needs fives or sixes. In this case, he's suffered two wounds. Resilience means that I ignore the first one. And I can also sacrifice a model within very short to cancel other dice that I have found. So I will sacrifice this guy. So it's important that I uh, roll up my defense dice for the unit that is fighting with first, because if they are all wiped out, and the Warlord takes wounds. So let's go back to our example here where our Warlord has taken two wounds and uh, our models from our Warriors unit have been wiped out. They took four casualties and didn't save any of them, four hits and didn't roll any defense dice. So our Warriors have been wiped out. Our Warlord has taken two wounds that he didn't save against. Now resilience allows him to cancel one of them. However, there's nobody left for him to sacrifice and therefore takes a wound and dies also. So it's important that resilience, when I'm using it in this side-by-side -side example, is applied uh, to the warriors first. They roll up their defense dice before I go ahead and roll the defense dice for my warlord, just in case I want to use that resilience special rule. And there's nobody left for me to sacrifice. So that's our episode talking about warlord special rules. Just to quickly summarize, the warlord has an armor rating of five, but against shooting that is increased to six, the Warlord generates five attack dice in melee, as we saw in some of our examples. He also has five special rules. Resilience, which allows him to ignore the first non-cancelled wound. And he is also able to sacrifice non-levy models within very short. We have the determination special rule, which allows us to activate our Warlord for free. 
We have the side-by-side -side special rule, which allows him to bring another unit using We Obey, which we'll mention again in a second, just to summarize, into combat with him. The We Obey special rule that allows the Warlord to activate and activate another unit to declare a move action. And our final special ability, Warlord's Pride, which means that if the Warlord activates for a movement and he can engage the enemy Warlord in melee, then he must do so. I hope that's been useful for those guys following along and perhaps for those guys getting into the game. We're almost towards the end of our series on learning how to play Saga. Couple more videos left, then we'll start reviewing factions and all that sort of stuff and jumping into some battle reports. So I hope it's been useful, hope it's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye.